Hey everybody and welcome to another Work Your Career Wednesday. I'm Bradley Clark and I'm so glad you're able to join us today. Uh, we have a great show. Before we get to that, I want to talk to you about White Husky Films. If you have anything, and I mean anything, you'd want to document uh, via video, give Steven Saldana a call. His number is on the screen and you can always go to the website www.whitehuskyfilms.com. Dream, create, record in that order. You'll be so glad you did. Now on with the show. Uh, part two, all right, part two, right, <laughs> of Corey Jackson's interview. I got to tell you guys, I, I have gotten so much out of this interview just personally and I think you will too. Today we cover a lot of topics. Number one, we pick up where we left off from last week. We find out why Corey started a recruiting firm in the first place. Uh, we talk about what being a servant leader is to him. And also he gives advice for people who are starting over. Um, uh, great advice. If you are starting over, you want to watch today. And uh, finally, what a good, strong spiritual foundation means to him as he leads his company Quirks in this new age. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I, I'm curious. Former NFL basketball player, world-class athlete, played on the world's biggest stages. I'm going to start a recruiting company. Yeah. So, so <laughs> everything, everything is directly connected. And so yeah. um, it, it seems I just when, from the outside looking in when you say it like that, but really what happened Bradley was, so I went through this experience, played mm -hmm. professional sports, um, got out of the league, started speaking and traveling and, and doing those things. And I started having former teammates and friends reach out to me that were either coming out of the league or about to come out of the league. And they were just like, man, you know, I'm trying to find my next thing. What am I going to do? And so initially I just started connecting them with the people that I was connecting with from speaking and traveling and going to conferences and things like that. And I started to see that there was a correlation between companies that were hiring that were looking for a certain caliber of person and then the athletes and what they were bringing to the table. So my company actually started at, as us connecting athletes directly with companies. So mm -hmm. it wasn't about what the full service uh, company that we're, the things that we're offering now and, and all the things, because we still do that. Like that's still a part of what Quirks does um, mm -hmm. is help athletes find their next thing and connect with the companies, but also just as much help the companies find the type of people that they're looking for that can be in these high level sales roles or leadership roles and things of that nature. Um, so the company started just specifically from that standpoint. And then companies started asking us, can you help us find this? And we help us find that. And then we kind of rounded it out to where we we're working on, you know, technical roles. We're working on uh, healthcare roles. And, and so mm -hmm. we're, we're working with companies in all different aspects and about at least right now, about seven to, to 10 different industries. That is incredible. That is so cool. Yeah, that is so it, cool. It's all connected. It just, you know, and it's I think all connected. life is, you know, you it pushes you to your next thing. Like I got pushed from basketball to football and pushed mm -hmm. into speaking. Even when I started speaking, I didn't even want to speak. Um, this this guy really? Yeah, this guy convinced me, man. I, I, was, uh, I was I was I'm glad he did. That is, I mean, I I, I love your story. It was, Kudos to that guy. I mean, the guy, man, I was playing for the Denver Broncos and the guy wanted me to come speak to some teams that were at this boot camp. And they pretty much was at this like stage in their life where their parents didn't know what to do with them. And, mm -hmm. and they were pretty much like they were ready to give up on them, you know, that type mm -hmm. of deal. And so the guy said, Hey man, you should come speak to these kids. And I've never, so I have a, a speech communication degree. So I, I've, and, and the reason, the only reason I have that is because I couldn't speak in front of people at all at all like i get in front of a crowd couldn't say two words right wow. so i was so competitive that i took a speaking class my first uh my first semester made a d so i was like man i'm gonna take another one and then i kept taking them and i ended up like i never made an a in any of them um and it was just something that i was trying to prove to myself 
So I never had any idea that I would be speaking in front of people at all. It was just, I had, a, I was that competitive with myself, but like, I'm going to, I'm going to pass these classes. I'm going to do it. Right. And so <clears throat> when the guy asked me to speak, I didn't want to do it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I took these classes. I don't, you know, and, and each class was excruciating, by the way. It wasn't like, I was like, oh, oh. yeah. Especially just, if you, especially if you can't say two words in front of the crowd. <laughs> You know? Yeah, so it was it was like we have to have this five minute speech and mine would be like a minute and a half and teacher be like, what the heck? like, you know, and so so I didn't want to do it. The guy convinced me and he was like, listen, come just just come out and say a couple words, you know. Mm-hmm. And so in my mind, I'm like, all right, it's kids, you know, I can just come say, you know, hey, work hard, guys, you know, focus and, you know, just some, some basic yeah. stuff and go on by my business. Right. So, so what the guy didn't tell me was he walks me into this building and when he walks me in, he, he walks me through this door and we walk up on a stage. So it wasn't like I just like came into a room. I walked up on a stage and when I walked up on the stage, it was about three to 400 kids like sitting there. So I'm like, what the heck? Like, so I, so I'm like, this is a big setup, man. He was like, I'm going to talk to a few kids. I'm like, this is a whole right. auditorium full of people. And so, and so like I had, you should have led with that. Thanks. I, I had no idea what I was going to say. Um, I got on the stage and this was probably the, this is probably uh, why I feel like it couldn't happen any better because it made me so raw and, mm-hmm. and uh, transparent. I stood on that stage. The guy, I mean, I walked it. Boom, he introduced me and then said, here you go. And you could hear a pin drop because these kids were like on the edge of their seats waiting to hear yeah. something. And I, I, I stood there for like maybe, you know, a few seconds. And then that was the first time I told that story that I told you. Wow. And it was, But it was in detail. I mean, graphic detail. The, the, yeah. the, the, the year that I was out of high school and working in Walmart, how my life was chaos, how I was getting into street fights, guns pulled on me. Um, sure. how I was so self-destructive because I didn't have anywhere to point all of this energy that I wanted to, to put into something that mattered and ca- I cared about so much that mm-hmm. I was doing things that was detrimental to my own life. And, mm-hmm. and I'm having these, con- I'm just like, it's all pouring out, man. And like, like, and this mm-hmm. is not, it's, it's, I haven't practiced, rehearsed it. It's just raw. And, mm-hmm. and I'm going for probably about maybe like 50 minutes, man. I'm talking about just boom, 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 just, and it's quiet. Everybody just sitting there, you know, just shocked at the end. We all were in tears, man. It was just like, it was just crazy. Um, and so the energy in the room was just so amazing. The kids, you can see their spirits were changing because, you know, these mm-hmm. kids were anywhere from, I want to say 13 to like, 18 years old like these were mm. these were like kids that were in this this period of their lives that was so impressionable and their parents don't know what to do with them and the world is already given up on them mm. already at this young age and my life started at 19 mm. i got on a bus at 19 mm. and so they could relate to that they could they could like i was only a few years older than them when i made my decision and so it was just a huge, huge connection. Um, and ever since then, I just knew, I said, you know, I'm going to share, you know, my stories, my experiences, my ideas. And I started speaking all over. Um, I started getting booked to speak. Um, I had people that knew me pretty much most of my life and booked me to speak. And it's like, well, I didn't know all of this about you. And, mm. you know, um, it, it really changed my life in a lot of ways, because when you when you connect with people, it's really more on a spiritual level it's different. You know, it's a, it's a different connection. We had a, we had, we had word for that. Me growing up called the anointing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so amazing. And, you know, sometimes we, we want to, you know, my next question is, kind of goes into that um, to where, you know, sometimes you ask the, I, I, why, I don't know why this is happening or, you know, I don't know why I didn't get this. I don't know why I didn't get that. You know, and I'm sure it goes without saying, and it's probably a redundant question, but there's going to be a lot of people that are at a point where they're starting over again, Mm -hmm. particularly when it comes to, um, like you were talking about recruiters 
you know, had 15, 20 years experience and they can't get a job and, um, and they're really good or whatever, you know, what advice do you give to someone when the phone ain't call, phone ain't ringing, the emails ain't coming and they, they feel like they have to start over, you know, and, and maybe they're in that period of self-destruction. I mean, you could be 19 or 90 and feel that way. Yeah. You know, what, 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 what advice do you give them and, and how would you advise or coach someone to bring them up out of that mess so they can find their signal? Yeah, it's a couple things. Um, and this is the exact same things that I share with athletes as they transition out of uh, mm-hmm. professional sports too. Um, so, yeah, cause it's no different. It's no different. Right. Um, the thing that you have to do is get excited about the journey, the experience. Um, and so if you're going into something new, remorseful, or just, you know, uh, not really wanting to do it, then it's going to be harder for you. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you're finding a way to be excited about the new frontier and opening up new experiences and new relationships, if you can get excited about that and then on top of that, be willing to start wherever you need to start. Mm-hmm. I promise you, you're going to get to where you want to be a lot faster because what's going to happen is that attitude that you have, that positive attitude, that positive mindset, that energy yeah. of wanting to learn and experience and take in new things. It's going to bring you closer to the things that you really want and, and things that you probably never thought you would have. Right. Mm. Because these things that are hanging on the wall back here, I never thought I would ever, ever have that. I never even thought oh, about awesome. that. Right. Yeah. And so if, if we have the right mindset and the right attitude and we're, we're going approaching this thing as this is a fun opportunity for me to learn something new, find something new, do something different. And I don't care about the status where I start. Right. Mm. Because so many people miss it. Right. You miss it because I didn't want to go to junior college or I didn't want to ride a bus. I, I only can afford to get on the bus. Yeah. I, I prefer to fly. Greyhound wasn't my first choice. I don't right. have the money to fly a Greyhound. I mean, fly on the, on, the, on the plane. So I get on the Greyhound. Right. And so we have to start where we are and be excited about that. Mm. And then it's going to take us to where we need to be. You know, being in junior college, it made me appreciate when I got to Division One, being able to fly to every game. Like we got crazy. We go to a different city, we fly everywhere, and yeah. we don't have to wait in line and all this. And then you know, and so you you're gonna be able to appreciate that journey if you just embrace the beginning parts of it. And yeah. I know life is real. I understand we have bills, we have spouses, we have kids. I understand that, but I'm telling you you're going to get to where you be, want to be faster if you just embrace where you are and don't worry about status. Don't worry about what people think. Man, this guy's been doing this. Man, why is he over here doing this low-level job? Or why he's, Don't worry about that. Just understand that you're on a journey and you're on a mission, and it's your job to make sure that you fulfill, fulfill your part of the, 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 the deal. Because when we come into this world, there's a deal. It's like, You do everything you can do and the universe is going to operate how the universe is supposed to operate. Right. Right. And so a lot of times we want to go and try to dictate things where it's like, no, you have, you can't, I can't, you can't skip the line, man. Mm. Can't skip the line. Powerful. You know, you you have to go through it. And and if you go through it, you're going to be so much stronger and so much better for it, but your success level is going to be so high and people are going to be asking you like, how did that happen? And you're going to be saying, man, I, you know, I don't know. Like I just did this. Right. And and I tell my, my 12 year old, he wants to be a basketball player. And he gets so frustrated with me because I, I tell him, I say, listen, you, he wants to like show up and have all the moves. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, like come, come out here. Let me show you something. Bring him on the court. He can't score one point. Right. He gets mad. Right. I said, well, why are you crying? Because I can't do this. I said, well, how often have you been doing this? Right? Yeah. Because you, you have to understand if you haven't been doing this, then you can't expect to be successful at it. 
I said right. this is the part that people don't see, mm -hmm. but you can't skip this part. There's no skip. There's there's no there's no uh back in the day we used to put in fast uh, forward. Remember we used to play the games where where you put the code in a cheat code where you can oh skip yeah levels. You yeah. can't skip. Ain't no cheat code in life. There's no cheat code. You can't. The only cheat code you can have is literally your DNA. If you're yeah, genetically yeah. just a freak of nature, right? That just is what. That's the only cheat code, and you have nothing to do with that. You have zero to do zero. with that. Yeah. I have I have nothing to do with the fact that I'm six seven. I have yeah. nothing to do with that. I didn't I didn't work for that. Didn't have to do anything for that. And so those are the only cheat codes that exist. Other than that, you have to go through the process. Well, and then what are you going to do with that six seven? Exactly right. You know, you got to learn how to how to navigate that and and know how to how that moves and and that comes with with time. You know, it's like what what they used to tell us: uh, practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Yep. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the the other thing too, and I think your story it just exemplifies this: is you you got to have heart too. You know, you got to yeah. have heart in terms of, you know, with anything. For you know, sure. And, and sometimes that comes with a lot of hard knocks and a lot of pain, you know, yeah. and, and, a, and a lot of I'm OK. You told me I can't do this. You beat me. I can't do this. So I'm going to do this. And it's so funny. I tell people all the time, it's easy to to be just regular, man. And what I mean by regular and I'm come mean, on. I'm, I mean this in the worst way possible, please. Because because I, I went, love it. I went through this experience when mm -hmm. I was I was in that gap where I'm working at Walmart and things not going right. It was easy for me to to, to punch someone in the face. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like it was it, yeah. was, it was like hey, bow. It's like please please present the opportunity. Yeah, I need this right now. And 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 so it's easy for us to do. The, the the destructive thing or the useless thing or yeah you know, it's easy to come home and yell at your wife and 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 you know what I'm saying like like because your life isn't right but when you really think about it, it's like okay how do I do the extraordinary thing what right. is the thing that I really need to do like like anyone can come home and yell at their wife and yell at their kids mm -hmm. and drink beer all day and and, mm -hmm. and and be combative because life ain't going to where they wanted to go or they lost their job or you know, they're yeah. about to lose their house or whatever it is, right? But right. what is the extraordinary thing to do? What what do great men and great women do in the face of adversity? How do they right. handle that? How do they treat that? Right. And so so for us, we have to make those decisions. Like, you know what? Things are not going right for me. And that's okay. Let me figure it out. But that has nothing to do with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Me. I have to. I'm searching for signal and I have to find that signal. My job is to stay on my job and find that signal. And that's all, that's my only job. You know, mm -hmm. what goes on outside of that has, is not my concern, you know? And if we can stay on our job, we're going to find what we're looking for. Like, like the thing said, like, like it's so simple. Seek mm -hmm. and you should find, and right? You should find. It, well, at least and it doesn't say seek for two seconds, two minutes, two days, two hours, right? It just says seek. To seek. And that means that's a constant. That means that it doesn't stop. That means that you have mm -hmm. to continue to seek. That means after I hit a level of success, play in the NFL, guess what I have to do? Seek. seek. Start a company, hire people. Guess what I have to do? Seek. seek. For it real. Stop. <laughs> it's continuous, right? And, and yeah. it's with the theme of being a recruiter, too. So that that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, you know, along with that, you know, in my own life, you know, when um, when things have derailed for me, um, I have noticed that when that happened, my spiritual life wasn't right. I, I wasn't. Um, I mean, that's just all there is to it. I, it my it, it just wasn't right, even when I was pretty successful in Christian gospel music. Mm -hmm. a point where my 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 walk it wasn't that my walk didn't match my talk it wasn't that it was just I wasn't right you know what I mean yep. how important is a strong spiritual foundation yeah to, uh, to you or and to anybody else 
Yeah, it's, it's extremely important. I think at the end of the day, that foundation is what keeps you from falling to pieces, man. Like it, it keeps mm. you upright, you know? Um, and if you have that strong foundation, you'll realize something that's very important. And I realize this every day when I wake up, no matter if it's with my company, doesn't matter if it's with my household, doesn't matter if it's with my friends. I realize this every single day. It's not about me. It's not about me. And so if, if I can do my job every day and realize what I want is the, the least common factor in this equation, what my client wants, what my candidate wants, that's the most important thing. And if I get really good at understanding how to give my wife what she wants and needs, my kids what they wants and need, they needs are, my wants and needs are going to be taken care of. And that's right. how having a strong uh, spiritual foundation works because it makes you put people before yourself, you know, and, and you certainly going to put people before things. Right. And so, mm -hmm. you know, my, my six year old, he had a, a, a birthday at school and, you know, they give all these little you know snacks and little gifts and stuff. And someone took whatever thing he had toy or whatever it is. So, and I don't know if someone picked it up by mistake or someone just took it. Right. And, and I'm walking in to pick him up. He's distraught, man, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to give him perspective. You know, he's a kid. So yeah. I said, listen, son, I said, the thing that you're looking for, the thing that's missing, the thing that lost, do they make more of those? He's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, I'm your dad, right? Do we have means to get more of these? Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah, dad. So why are you upset? So now this is a metaphor because God exists. He's the father. I lose my job. Why am I upset? Right. Do, my dad has the means Come on. to give me what I need, right? He mm -hmm. has the, the, the means to replace and replenish and greatly exceed, exceed what I had before. Mm -hmm. But if I'm so caught up in the fact that I lost this thing and forget who my father is, mm. I'm going to put myself in a situation where I'm not going to be able to succeed because now mm. I then cut off my lifeline. Right. Mm. That's why that's why when you see dads uh, with their with their kids and and the kid is afraid to do something. Mm -hmm. The fathers are usually gets upset and frustrated. Why? Why do why do I as a father get ex upset and frustrated because my kid uh, is afraid to go across these monkey bars or like why does that why does that happen? It happens because I'm with you. You should never mm. be afraid when I'm with you, mm. right? And so. As we go that'll through preach. As we go through these challenges, wow. we have to remember who's with us. Come you on, know? and so that's what happens all the time. And and so and so having a strong uh, spiritual foundation is everything because you can't you can't survive this world and keep your sanity without having something to latch on to that that elevates you past everything that's going on on a day to day basis. One, how often you know, particularly when we're when our plans change or they're changed for us. And if you don't, it, it's, it's latching on, but, but knowing that you're, you're held, yep. you know, I have never heard it that way to where you see dads crushed. I have never heard it that way before. Yeah. That's, I, that's, it, that's awesome. It happens to me all the time. I'm like, I am, I am here. Why are you afraid? Like it, it, there's, right. it make sense. I can't even understand that. Right. I'm, right here next to you, what are you afraid of? And so I can only imagine man. God Almighty. Right. Man, I'm right here. <laughs> I'm We're right good. here. I got yeah. you. Yeah. And, and, so, and, so powerful. and so we have to remember, we have to remember that because like I said, if people lose their sanity because they, they don't have that connection because they forget. They think it's, they're out here by themselves. And they think that, you know, yeah. and, and when you think about things that happen, and, and we hear this all the time. Think, you know, everything happens for you. But you have to really embrace that, right? So, so I'll tell you this. 
the last time I played in the NFL, I didn't know it was my last time, right? Mm -hmm. When I got selected to go to uh, <clears throat> Cleveland, my mom just got diagnosed with multiple cirrhosis, right? So, mm -hmm. so I, I, I'm, I'm going through this experience where I'm trying to achieve something in life that I thought was very important, right? <clears throat> and so my, my, so my family was here in South Carolina, I'm away. So I don't know my mom's having these challenges, right? So by the time I find out, she's really, it's really aggressive. Like she's, she's struggling to walk. She's losing her, mm. you know, it's just, it's just bad. Right. Yeah. And so I, uh, I, I didn't want to go play football. I said, you know what? I'm not doing this. Right. You know, I don't <laughs> care, you know, and my mom was just like adamant. No, like you're not, you're going to do it because this is what you set out to do. And you can't change what I'm going through, right? I'm mm -hmm. your mother. I want you to go do the thing that you set out to do. Mm -hmm. And so I go to my first training camp, man. It's tough. I mean, when I tell you it's tough, man, first of all, I'm not a football player. I don't know the language. I don't know the technique. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the terminology. I don't know any of this stuff. So I'm learning like, yeah. like, like on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And so right. I had a great coach, man, a great coach, and um, Andre Patterson, he was just teaching me step by step. And then in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about my mom, right? Sure. So I go through this process. We get a break at the camp. Um, I go, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna fly home to see my mom. So I fly home. When I get on the plane, Bradley, um, I have no idea that my mom can't see, right? So now she's completely blind, completely blind. Mm. I hop on the plane, we fly to Columbia, South Carolina. I land. By the time I get to my parents' house, she can see out of one eye. So now she has her sight back out of one eye. And so I spend about a week with her before I had to go back. And, you know, we had a great time. She could see. I'm like, okay, maybe she's getting better. Um, you know, Get back on the plane, sight goes out, never comes back, right? So now, fast forward a few years later, I'm playing for the Denver Broncos. I get injured, and I'm, I'm struggling, man, trying to get through this injury. Um, you know, was uh, competing for a starting job, all this stuff, like just, just, yeah. just a lot of things going on. Um, end up getting released. And call my mom. And I'm, I'm, you know, this is the, in my opinion, the worst day of life right now. Cause I'm like, man, I don't have a job. I got to sure. figure it out. Call my mom and told her what happened. And I'm thinking she's going to feel bad. My mom was so excited. She was like, yes. She was like, good. When is your flight? When are you coming home? Right. <laughs> Bradley, I promise you, I fly back home. Cause I, I bought a house here. Yeah. And met with my mom, didn't know that I was never going to play football again. Ended up spending the next six years being able to be right next to my mom wow. before she like, like literally like six years that I would have never had. Like, like, like literally six years that would have been gone. Mm -hmm. And I was blessed enough to get released from doing a job that I love to do and got to spend that with my mom, I didn't even have to make the decision. I didn't even have to make the decision. God, right? That's so good. And, wow. and so that was something that, that I was always grateful for because in mm. hindsight, I'm like, man, what if I would have got everything I wanted and would have missed out on that time to connect and be with her over this period of time? I would have never been able to live with myself. I probably would have been going crazy right now. Like I wouldn't be the yeah. person I am right now, you know? And so that's how we get protected and looked out for in our lives. So, so when things happen, you know, you have to understand like it's something greater taking care of you. It's a reason why these things are happening and we can't see it, but we don't need to see it. We don't need it. We don't need to see it. We just need to keep going. God is so good, man. So immeasurably good.
I, you know, her her sight goes, but she can see. I mean, it's just that it's just it's crazy. It's, it's so crazy. that doesn't man. happen, by the way, because when we went to the doctor, he was like, "Yeah, that doesn't happen." Once they you usually lose sight, this doesn't come back. Like. And it came back for that time that we was there. And and so the last image that she saw me was me going to accomplish the thing that I set out to do. And she saw wow. me in that moment. So it was amen. just a beautiful thing. I, I'm just going, amen. <laughs> I mean, that is so good. That is so good, man. You know, with all these experiences, how is it? How has this shaped you as a leader? And you know, in, in with one of my other guests, you know, we got we got to talking about leadership, mm -hmm. and um, I really I would, I would love to get your perspective. You know, there's so many times leaders have been really hurt, mm -hmm. stabbed in the back. You know, and we all say. Well, it's, you know, get your thick skin. And I've always, I've always seen where when someone has a thick skin and a soft heart, they tend to be a better leader mm -hmm. as opposed to the other way around. But it's hard. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. <clears throat> how, how is your experience and, and how do you coach other leaders to resist the temptation of a hardened heart and very thin skin, if we're honest, you yeah. know what I mean? There, there are names for these people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, but, it's, it's, it's two words, man. Um, and this is, this is things I had to learn. So isn't, yeah, I didn't come ready-made and equipped with this. Um, it's patience hmm. and it's empathy, right? Hmm. You know, um, kind of as the saying goes, no one's gonna have sympathy for the king, right? So, so you, you, you have to understand that when, you, when we step into certain positions, that's what we have to, to understand comes with that. We have to have empathy for people and we have to have patience with people. And it's not about us. It can't be about you. When it's about you, you're sensitive. When it's about you, you your ego gets touched. When it's about you, you make decisions off emotion. When it's not about you, I can be patient with Bradley. Mm -hmm. I can empathize with Bradley. Mm -hmm. Even if he does something to me, I can real I can empathize and say it wasn't about me. Because mm -hmm. I didn't do anything to Bradley, right? right. Bradley, Bradley, what what's going on? What what's happening with you? What what what's 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 happening in your life right now? Right. And so yeah. we can step in, and this is not easy to do. It's not easy to do. You have to you have to practice this, right? You have to really practice the patience, and you really have to, to practice the empathy, because if you don't, it's always going to be about you. You did this to me. Mm -hmm. You did this to me, right? And, and but mm -hmm. it's not it's not about you. It's about why did Bradley do that? What mm -hmm. is wrong? what what is going on with Bradley? What's happening in his life right now mm -hmm. that he would do something like that? Right. Because it has to be something happening in this person's life. Because I've been through that. Right. I've been the person yeah. that my life was that. And, and I was doing things that you were like, man, why that guy? You can't you can't say that to that guy. Right. Mm -hmm. This guy's going to flip. You say something to this guy and it's going to be a problem. And so right. I've been that person and I understand it. So, you know, if we as leaders can have patience and we can empathize with people, it's going to make us better for them. And then in return, we're going to feel better about ourselves. Can you have that empathy and, and really what you're describing is a servant leadership approach, mm -hmm. right? Can you be a servant leader and still be competitive? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, when you're a servant leader, you just have to understand. It's just like sports, right? You have to understand the scouting report, right? Who is Bradley? Right. Right? I have to know yeah. who you are. And, and, and so I can connect with you. Cause see the thing that makes it tough is you want people to be like you, right? Mm. 
for people right. to, to, to respond the way you would respond or let it roll off their back the way you would like, you know, like, and so I had a hard time with this for a long time because I'm like, just do this. I have a hard time Get up. with that. Just move. Yeah. Just go. And it's not that yeah. simple. You have to understand it's a process and people have to build up. It doesn't, mm-hmm. you, you don't turn the light switch on and then there's lights everywhere. It's just a process. You got to do the wiring. You got to connect right. the, the box and you got, it's, it's, and so people are being built over time. And if you're a good leader, you can help them get to where they need to be. And they're going to be on their own unique path and journey to, to getting to their best self, but it's not going to look the same as you. And, and that's something that we have to get over as leaders. We can't expect, even as a father, mm. I get frustrated. Sometimes. I'm like, man, why with, with my sons? I'm like, but I have to remember this is their journey, right? And so how they're right. gonna get there is gonna look so much different. And I have to be patient with them, but I still have to be uh I have to be patient, but I still have to be a constant. I have to be a constant reminder, I have to be a constant encourager, a constant motivator, I have to be a constant there to help them get there because mm-hmm. it doesn't take much to get somebody off track. It doesn't take a lot. Who was the uh... Who is the person that instilled or perhaps still is, is, is mentoring you? Like I, people are going to kill me if I don't ask this question, who is the best coach you ever played for? And that's the number one, but number two, who was, but really what I'm asking is who is the person that poured into your life that, you know, you really learned from, to bring you where you are today as a leader. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you got so much out of that. I know I have, and uh, all I can say is get ready for part three, and that'll be coming to you next week. So until next time for everyone at White Husky Films and Work Your Career Wednesday, I love you. And God bless you. Let his face shine upon you and give you great peace. Be excellent to yourself and each other. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. White Husky Films. Dream. Create. Record. We create ads and promos for your business. We can promote your video on television, Facebook, YouTube, Hulu, and more. We do a full Google SEO analysis for you with any plan. Call us today at 305-744-1444. Or visit our website at whitehuskyfilms.com. White Husky Films. You'll be glad you did. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Hey, if you like Work Your Career Wednesday and want to be notified every single time we have a new episode, like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Smash it. Get a hammer and get it and oh, oh. yeah, that's fine. Too much? No, that's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I love it. People love Do you it. hear Steven in the background? I was just making sure I'm gonna be okay. Yeah. But get that notification going, and hey, we will be letting you know, or I guess YouTube will be letting you know, when the next Worker Career Wednesday is on. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Man, ding it, ring it. Sling it and bow bang it. All right. And we will see you soon. Work your career Wednesday. Oh, great. I'm glad you stopped by. Be sure to get that subscription bell and I'll see you there.